Hi, this is Merrill from Tax Tutor. In this video, I wanted to talk about home office deductions and how they work. So, there's first off, I'd like to talk about a little bit of a a belief or a thought out there that having a home office deducted on your tax return subjects it to more of an audit risk. That could be the case. It, it's hard to know exactly what causes the IRS to audit a tax return. All I know is that I've taken it on quite a few tax returns, me and my partners and other people that I know, um, taken it for years on lots of different returns and I've never heard a peep from the IRS. Now granted, if you do get audited by the IRS and you have a home office on there, they're going to take a look at it, they're gonna make sure it's valid and they go through it, so it's important to make sure you're following the rules for it but in terms of putting it on a return, me personally, there's nothing I could point to and say, yep, that increases your IRS audit risk because you took a home office, you're now being audited. I've never seen that. I have no proof or no evidence of that that I've personally seen. I'm not saying it's not out there, it doesn't exist, but I just have no proof of it. And I don't know of many other CPAs or tax preparers that, that could provide any proof to that. Um, anyway, uh, that being said, how, how do you keep yourself safe? How do you make yourself uh, sure that when you take a home office deduction on your return that it's not going to subject, to some, subject you to some kind of an issue if the IRS does indeed audit you. So that gets us into the four reasons or the four purposes of how your home office qualifies for a deduction on your tax return. And the number one reason is probably one of the uh, most important one, and that is the exclusive test. So it has to be an area of your home that's used exclusively for business. It cannot be a, uh, a guest bedroom. If you've got a bed in there where occasionally a guest may come and stay, that's not gonna work. It can't be in the middle of your kitchen. It can't be in the middle of your living room. It can't be in the middle of your bathroom. It has to be somewhere where it's exclusively used for business, no personal use at all. So if you have a room that you could, you know, you don't necessarily have to close off, but if you have a room or a, an area of your house that you can say the only purpose people go in this area is for business, then that meets that exclusive test. It's exclusively used for business. There is no personal use going on. Uh, the second requirement is regular. It has to be regularly used for business. It cannot be, oh yeah, I've got this room in the basement that is our home office and nobody ever goes in the basement, right? Um, it's helpful to keep a log of how often that you use that and you'd want to use that regularly. What is regularly, uh, you know, that's, that's hard to tell. I mean, daily obviously is regularly, maybe weekly, maybe you could get by weekly. Uh, I'd say if you're getting to the every two weeks or every month, that, that, that might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, but you know, if it's something that you could use uh, daily, that would be the best, or, or weekly. Um, but you know, anything more than that might might be a bit of a stretch. So uh, keep a log of how often you use it and and what you use it for. Um, number three, it needs to be used for a trade or business. Okay, so this isn't being used for your hobby. It isn't being used for a nonprofit. It isn't being used for some project that you, you think you, you can do at some point. It needs to be used for a profit-seeking trade or business. Doesn't necessarily have to be profitable at the time that you take it. Um, although you do run into limits if you have a loss on your business in, into it being able to take that home office deduction. Sometimes that carries forward, that gets into the how it gets calculated and all that sort of rules that we won't get into at, during this video, but just know that it, it needs to be a trade or business that you're running to do that. And then number four,
It needs to be a principal place or of business. Uh, and that's determined by the significance of the activities, how much activity you have going on, uh, what you have going on in, in that place. So um, you want it to be, pardon me, I accidentally misspelled, let me spell principal, right? Principal, there we go, <laughs> principal place of business. That was probably driving some of you crazy. Um, it wants to be a, a you know, principal place of business that you have in there. So if you meet those, those tests, it's exclusively used, regularly used, it's trader business, it's a principal place of, of business, then you get more comfortable that it can be taken as a home office deduction. It can be deducted on your return. The IRS isn't gonna give you much of a problem necessarily on, on an audit. Um, they're certainly going to want to come see it. They're going to want proof of it that, it, that it's there, that it exists. So um, just know that if you do put that on your return you'll, and you get audited, you'll have an IRS auditor come into your house to, to look at that home office. Now, when, let's get into a little bit on how we calculate that home office deduction. There's two different ways that you can do that deduction. There is the um, uh, kind of the standard method. And then there's the actual method, kind of like with, with vehicles and expenses. You have the standard method and you have mileage, but in this case, you have, you have a standard and you have uh, an actual. Um, so the standard method is that you can conduct $5 per square foot up to 300 square feet. So if you have a 300 square foot space, you can deduct $1,500. You don't necessarily need to go and prove your utility expense and all those other expenses that go into your home office, you just measure out the space and you say, okay, you know, this is a 300 square foot space, times that by $5 per square foot, that's the 1500, take a $1,500 deduction on your return, that's it. Very simple, very easy to do. Or whatever your space measures out to be is, is what you can take on it. Uh, if you wanna do the actual expenses rather than the, um, the, the, that standard deduction, then you can do that. So that actual is what you would do is you would go look at things like um, your rent if you rent or your home interest if you're, if you're purchasing the home. Uh, you would look at property taxes. You'd look at the utilities on the home, your HOA fees, repairs and maintenance on the home. Uh, and you would be able to take a portion of the depreciation. And the way that it works on those is you take the portion of your home office versus the entire house. So let's say, and the, you know, using that same example, your home office is 300 square feet and your entire home is 3,000 square feet. So now 10% of your home is being used for a home office. And that enables you to deduct 10% of the utilities, 10% of the HOA fees, 10% of the um, depreciation on the home, of the rent or the interest or the home or the, uh, the, the property taxes, all those things. You, you take, take all the home expenses and times that by that 10% and deduct those on your return as a home office expense. So those are your options for deducting the expenses and the, the things that qualify for the home office expense. Uh, hopefully that was, was helpful and beneficial. And um, uh, yeah, we, we look forward to uh, talking more in an upcoming video.